You guys ready for that T4 time? Infinity Stone style? Yeah, so finally Black Order. Uh, this has probably been the most requested um, T4 rankings that uh, Yeti Punk and I have done. Uh, I will say that we took probably the deepest dive we've done. Um, uh, I did a four to six hour stream looking at the turn order, looking at some of the T4s, ranking the T4s. Yeti took a deep dive looking at the turn order as well. Uh, just kind of looking at the abilities, uh, analyzing piercing, all kinds of, and then we talked about it for a week and then we kind of sat on it. We got on a voice chat and talked about it for a few hours. Uh, we really tried to do um, uh, as deep as an analysis as you know, our real lives would let us. Uh, because obviously, you know, um, we've got to do our jobs, all that kind of stuff, but we still wanted to make sure to get this stuff done and out to you guys. Obviously, the Black Order has been out for a little over 24 hours now. We have not changed our rankings since this has come out. Uh, there's some stuff I'll talk about in the video uh, about, uh, you know, some text versus coding things that I have not gotten some confirmations on, uh, which could change some things dramatically in one of the passives, but uh, uh, we're not sure. So we ranked it as if uh, what the uh, coding says, not necessarily the text, but uh, we'll see if that was right or wrong. And maybe if we find out from Fox next what's really going on, we'll change it. So the animations for these guys are pretty dope. Uh, really love the moon throw. Uh, gotta, gotta, gotta love Thanos for doing that. So uh, anyway, I'll, get, I'll show you guys the, uh, I'm rambling and rambling and rambling, but uh, I'll show you guys the, the graphic. Uh, with uh, that we did with Punk and Yeti uh, and myself uh, and I'll just hold it up there I'll just show it to you guys and um, then I'll go over the uh, upgrades and then I'll do the deep analysis uh, review of both Yeti and I's comments so let's uh, go check out that graphic Bring me Wolverthor So, uh, you just saw Call Obsidian Leap in the background, but there should be a graphic. Uh, I'll get these direction right one day. It always depends on where my horizontal stuff is. So it's over there. Like I always say, you could just pause it at this point, but then you wouldn't be able to see that epic, epic animation. The moon throw. So anyway, I think I've uh, let it sit up there long enough, and I have it. You can pause it. So one of the things I did want to mention before I really get into this video is that uh, the positioning of this team, there was some debate about switching Thanos and Ebony Maw in their spots uh, because you want that adjacent damage from Cull. Um, but our theory was that you really only need one of them next to him uh, so that you can get that damage. If you really want to switch them, we could see that argument. So when you look at the recommended um, order of the team, which by the way is in the infographic, if you look at the bottom there, it shows how we believe the team should be set up. Um, that was one of the items that we did talk about. So I just wanted to mention that in the video before moving on. So now let's move on. After that dope moon toss. Okay, so um, as always, I like to go through the T4s pretty quickly, just to at least give you an understanding for what they are. Uh, I don't go into them as, you know, this specific, this specific, this specific upgrade for each one. I might uh, touch on it a little bit, but I wanted to at least go through uh, these. So in case you didn't know what they were, they're right here. And I use the Ultron bot to go through this quickly. It's a fantastic tool in Discord. I highly recommend it. So first up, Corvus Glaive Basic. Uh, it's attack primary target, basically an additional 20% piercing. Um, and uh, a, a guaranteed chance uh, to get an assist from uh, uh, an ally proximal midnight. Used to be 50%, this is guaranteed. And one of the things I do wanna mention um, and that I kind of alluded to in the intro is piercing. Uh, one of the f uh, big, bigger feedback items that we've got is uh, you know talking about piercing, how much we need to factor that in a little bit more. So uh, I'm gonna work uh, on getting that into the damage rankings. So hopefully you guys see that uh, uh, a little bit more emphasis on the piercing dynamic of these attacks. So keep an eye out on that for uh, in the future. Uh, special Corvus uh, Bloodletting. This is an additional 40% piercing. This was actually the ability that uh, made uh, myself realize and talking with Yeti and a couple others, the damage increase that you get there is, it's it's pretty solid. It was like top 50, top 60. So, you know, in that piercing jump, that's a, could be a, a death blow. 
Uh, Corvus Ultimate, again, additional 40% piercing for uh, primary target and attack all adjacent targets for an additional 40% piercing. So Corvus is really getting a heavy piercing upgrades in his uh, T4 abilities. And that's another reason why it's really important to understand what that piercing is really doing for the damage that he's going to inflict. Uh, the passive upgrades here, uh, while in stealth, an additional 20% crit chance uh, and gain an additional 10% damage for self, Black Order, and Thanos allies. Uh, that damage part's probably the, the winner of that one. Proxima. So her basic upgrade is an additional 40% damage to primary target and then another guaranteed assist from Corvus Glaive. So it goes from 50% to 100% guaranteed assist. It's a big jump uh, when you're really kind of playing that RNG game of knowing uh, to get that assist from someone. If it was 60, 70, 80, uh, it's, if it's 70, 80, 90, uh, it's, you know, maybe you're questioning it, but the 50 to 100, it's a pretty good upgrade there. Uh, special for Proxima, an additional... 50% damage to the primary target, apply offense down for two turns instead of one. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, chain to three targets for um, within two spaces for an additional 50% damage to each target, and then also apply offense down to them for two turns as opposed to one. Ultimus, uh, Proxima Midnight's ultimate. Um, additional 40% damage to primary target and instead of changing the speed bar uh, or reducing the speed bar by 25%, you reduce it by 50%. And remember, this ability also slows them as well and stuns them. So it can really take somebody out of the fight with that one. Uh, Proxima's passive is on turn, you get, have a guaranteed chance to clear stealth from the most injured enemy. So instead of 50%, it's 100% guaranteed to clear that stealth. Um, and you gain additional 10% focus on uh, self, Black Order, and Thanos allies. Call Obsidian, this guy is just a stat machine, a, a guy throwing a bunch of damage around. Uh, his basic is an additional 50% to primary and adjacent targets. Uh, it's a pretty good uh, hit there given his base damage. His special, uh, when he, this is his taunt ability, basically he heals for an additional 10%. So a total of 20% heal versus 10, but the T4 gives you an additional 10%. Um, his ultimate upgrade, uh, this is an additional 110% damage to primary target, plus an additional 15% damage per death proof on self. So you get the 110, and then for every death proof he gets, he has on him, you're adding 15% to that as well. Um, so instead of a 10% per death proof, it's a 25% per death proof. And you're likely to have at least one of those on him at the point he uses. More than likely, he's got two. Uh, so that's a pretty big damage um, boost there. It was one of the, I think, top five in the game, if I remember correctly. And we'll go over that again uh, in a little bit. Calls passive. Um, when an enemy attacks ally Thanos or Ebony Maul, you attack that enemy for an additional 50% damage. And this is going to happen a decent amount. So this guy is going to be throwing those passive attacks out a lot. Think Thor when people are attacking as guardians, but instead of waiting for five charges, he just hits you. You hit Ebony Maul on Thanos, he's hitting you. Um, and an additional 10% max health for self, Black Order, and Thanos allies. All right, basic upgrade for the, and all of the Thanos up, um, upgrades here are empowered. I didn't focus on the regular Thanos. All that matters here is empowered. His basic upgrade is an additional 60% damage to primary target um, and a guaranteed chance to gain a counter. So 60% chance uh, increase, or 60% increase in damage to primary and an additional 20% chance to gain a counter, which is guaranteed special for empowered thanos so flip all negative effects to positive effects for allies flip instead of three all positive effects to negatives for enemies so if your enemies have positive effects on them instead of flipping three you're now going to flip all of them to negative effects that's a pretty big deal um when you've got you know either an ultron or uh, it's a mirror match and they've got all the positive buffs up you're going to be flipping all of them uh, and then uh, apply taunt to an ally obsidian, obsi call obsidian instead of one turn, two turns. Honestly, that part of the T4 is a total waste because um, he's. this is going before call obsidian even takes a turn. So, and call obsidian's first turn is taunting for two turns. So it's kind of like, okay. So the two turn is, second turn upgrade there doesn't make any sense. But it is what it is. 
Um, Thano Empowered Thanos' ultimate. Attack all targets for an additional 50% piercing and repeat this attack, repeat this attack um, a guaranteed two times instead of one to two times. Uh, so it's pretty solid. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's gonna be a heavy hitting attack. The animation like you saw is super cool. Really, really love that one. Great job, uh, graphic artists, um, animators, all the folks at Fox Next who put that one together. Uh, very, very impressive. Everyone's really been digging that. Uh, and then the passive um, upgrade for Thanos is, um, if a character's health is full at the start of the match, the first time this character or a Black Order ally drops below 50% health, change speed bar by an additional 10% and apply regen to self and all Black Order allies. So instead of a 40% speed bar increase, gets a 50% uh, speed bar increase. So this is basically like as people drop down, he's going quicker and going quicker. Um, and then lower damage, and this adds armor to this part. So before it says lower damage by 10% for all enemies, but now it's lower damage and armor by 10% for all enemies. Before the armor wasn't in there at all. All right, and last but not least, the legendary of this group, um, the uh, basic for Ebony Maw is an additional 10% piercing on primary target uh, for a total of 80%. Bonus attack is guaranteed three times as opposed to two. That's it for the basic. Special for Ebony Maw, apply defense up for two turns instead of one to self and all allies. And that's not just Black Order allies, it's all allies. So instead of two turn or one turn of defense up, you get two turns of defense up. Pretty nice to be a guaranteed defense up for a while there. The ultimate for Ebony Maw. This is another one where it actually adds an ability or text or whatever you want to call it to it, similar to the um, armor reduction for Thanos. So th what this does is adds this, the following text I'm about to read is now in his uh, pass or is in his ultimate. Fill speed bar for self and all allies by 5% per Black Order and Thanos allies. Reduce speed bar for all enemies by f a negative 5% per Black Order and Thanos allies. So that speed bar uh, gain and reduction, the speed bar drain, so to speak, it doesn't exist without the T4. So if you want that speed bar swap, you gotta do the T4 in that ability. The passive for Maw, just a resistance increase. Now, this is gonna be one of them that I talk about. Um, uh, I'm gonna focus here on a, uh, in, in what's real. Um, right here, you see that um, it's, it says a 10% uh, resistance gain for self and Black Order and Thanos allies for a total for self and uh, Black Order and Thanos allies are 30% resistance increase if you have a T4. Now let's look at the text in the game. Okay, so this is the T4, what it says in game. It says gain 10% resistance, Black Order and Thalys, Thanos allies gain plus 30% resistance. So how would you read that? The way I read that is, okay, he gains 10%. And which for a total of, if I'm, I've already got four of them there, so my his ability says he's got 20, so now he's got 30%. And then if you look at Black Order and Thanos, it says, well, plus 30. So that means they get an additional 30, so they're a 50% resistance. That's the way I read that. I don't know about you, but you know, it's like, it's it, within its own ability, it, it's showing plus 10 and then plus 30. So it doesn't mean equals 30, it's saying plus 30. So if I read this, I'm put, I'm like, I want 50% resistance on my Thanos allies. But both msf.gg and the Ultron bot, which pull from code and files from the game, have it as a total of 30%, which means it's plus 10% resistance to self and Black Order and Thanos allies. Now I've asked Fox next for clarification on this. I haven't received uh, any info one way or another. Um, and I've even had debates with people about what it likely is. Um, and some legendaries have some 50%-ish upgrades. Black Bolt is, it for an example, I think it's 50% health. So it could be 50% resistance for uh, the team. I don't know. Um, so be very careful in upgrading his passive. Uh, the team definitely needs 50% resistance, at least because the fact that Iron Fist is clearing taunts off of Call of Obsidian is ridiculous, um, especially considering this is supposed to be an Apex Arena team. Uh, but when you see stuff like that, uh, you kind of go, wait a minute, shouldn't be he be holding his taunt? This isn't supposed to be Cree Royal Guard who loses his taunt instantly. This is Call Obsidian, the Apex, the tank of the Apex Arena team. Apex Arena team. So anyway, um, I don't know what that one is. 
we debated it, but uh, just wanted to throw that out there for you guys so you at least understood the potential conflict there. Okay, so like I said, this the, we talked about this team um, a lot. We've got a lot of text in here. Uh, we hope this helps you understand some of our decisions. You know, obviously we're always willing to chat, come to any of our discords. All of those links will be in the descriptions below. Uh, you know, we typically get a lot of uh, back and forth from folks about what they think, and we love that kind of debate and uh, conversation. So please send it our way. We always try to factor that in in our decisions, and sometimes it makes revisions, or sometimes it's something we factor in to a, a ranking or infographic that we might do in the future. So please share any input and thoughts that you guys have. One of the first things I want to say before going through this list is this team could potentially get all T4. All of the T4 upgrades here, even though it's nothing else to use them on and they've got T4s to spare, they're not bad upgrades. There wasn't an upgrade that was kind of like, that's trash, that's bad. So like when you compare this infographic comes to some others and you, you look at a green one here, it might be better than a yellow and some other ones. Um, we look at it as kind of a wholesale team approach um, you know, and, uh, you, you know, look, Apex Arena team or not, uh, the team is great on offense, uh, and these T4s aren't really going to necessarily go to waste. So if you've got them and you spend them on it, while it hurts, it's a lot of gold and you want them to be potentially better than they are, they're not necessarily bad upgrades. So anyway, having said that, let's go through it. So coming into 20, um, I've got Ebony Mall's basic. My comment was turn three ability. 10% added piercing and only one additional attack. I said, okay, but not great. Um, at 24, uh, Yeti, he had Call Obsidian's basic. His comment was, I really wanted to rate this basic higher, but Call Obsidian is a slow character and is not called for assists by others. So while the damage increase is nice, it's not a high impact T4. Um, and for that one specifically, I, he and I debated that one a lot. I had that one a lot higher at first um, because of the uh, damage rank for it. But I, and the fact that it hit adjacents, but you know the fact that Call is, is such a slow um, uh, character, and it's not as basic that is passive as proccing. It's just a damage. The T4 to the basic is really only when he uses his basic, which is much later in the match. So it is kind of like a, yeah, you know that you're not going to use that necessarily all that much. What I had at 19 is Empowered Thanos Passive, which, let's be real, almost everybody who has Thanos at this point probably already had this anyway, given you wanted the energy um, from regular Thanos. Uh, my comment is gaining an additional 10% speed bar is just okay. Same with decreasing enemy armor, armor by 10%. As much as it's like, okay, armor decrease is nice, I was like, yeah, it's 10%. You know, it's like, okay. Again, I'd love it to be more, but it's just not. Now, that's when uh, at 19, Yeti had Ebony Maul basic, so he and I are spot off there, uh, one spot difference. His comment was, I rarely get excited about the T4 upgrade of a support character, but I have to admit, this one is pretty good. What I really enjoy about it is that it's multiple hits of piercing attacks, three additional times per stack up, and clear death proof and deflects easily. And that's one of the nice things about this basic is the fact that it keeps ticking. Um, it does clear, you know, certain things. So it's kind of like, you know, if there's a bunch of deflects up there, it's like, okay, they're gone now because it hit multiple times. Um, at 18, I had and Yeti both had, so we're equal here, um, the Call Obsidian Special. My comment was additional 10% heal, which could be around 12K depending on the level. Is this okay? Nothing too insane. We'll take, da we'll, we'll take damage because Thanos put taunt on them. Um, this could be higher, but uh, it's just not a huge heal. Uh, Yeti's comment is this healing. The healing of this ability will be nice, even if at first glance it seems low. Call Obsidian has a lot of health, so 20% healing. Every handful of turns will help him Will help him be the brick wall the team needs. Uh, coming at 17 is when I have Call Obsidian's basic, and I've got this one. It got T4's Despair. I couldn't, uh, myself, I couldn't leave this one as a green. I wanted it as a blue because it was damage. Uh, the damage increase was ranked 46th in the game and it hit the adjacent targets. My comment was the nice ability increase, but a turn three ability on a slow character, which we already discussed. If this was what is passive proc, then this would be at least a yellow or higher. Uh, and at this point, 17, Yeti's got the empowered Thanos passive. So note that we've got we've got the same bottom four. We might have them shifted slightly, but they're, all, they're the same. Uh, his comment is the additional speed bar for the team as they get damage is quite nice, especially as especially as this will frequently or frequently occur in arena, lowering the armor of enemies by 10% is really nice touch. 
Overall, this ability has some nice functionality, but doesn't do nearly as much as the non-empowered Thanos passive. Over half of the team attacks are piercing, so lowering the enemy's armor by 10% is not a big difference, except for Proxima, Midnight, and Call Obsidian. So this is something Yeti wanted to make sure that we emphasized here, is that when you're seeing this much piercing attacks from your team, the reduction in armor doesn't gain you anything because piercing ignores armor. So when you really look at that 10% reduction, it doesn't matter. It's like he said, Proxima, Midnight, and Call Obsidian is really the only two teams that's affected. So uh, to me, this is kind of like, mm. all right. So next up on the list here, next three, we've got Proxima Midnight's Passive. Both of us have this at 16. Uh, normally I love that, this is my comment. Normally I love focus game, but 10% added to the low focus of Thanos and Call might not make much of a difference. Proxima and Maul already have decently high focus. The 50% guaranteed stealth removal seems very micro situational. Asgard's Phoenix, etc. That one was where you guarantee that stealth removal. I was just like, eh, how many times are you really gonna get that? So I was like, eh. Yeti's comment, I really like this on turn mechanism to remove stealth from the most injured enemy, even if stealth is not a common mechanism on most teams. It will certainly prove it's worth quickly against those teams that do. The 10% focus for the team and Thanos is really nice as there are a number of abilities that will really need to land for a Black Order to be enjoyable to play. Next up at 15, we both have Corvus Glaive Ultimate. My comment is added 40% piercing to primary and adjacent is nice. Currently not seen as a great one. This is a turn one. Yeti's comment is AoE piercing damage abilities are a staple for Corvus Glaive. And this ability will be sneaky good. And adding this T4 will show how strong he really is. Um, at 14, Proxima Midnight Special. This damage is ranked 81. And you're probably thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. Proxima Midnight Special all the way down at 14. Yeah, um, and I did struggle with this one a little bit, so I'll, I'll say my comment here. 50% damage increase is pretty solid, but the question is about the offense down for two turns. Maul goes shortly after her, and when he uses a special, he puts offense down for two turns anyway. Seems like heavy overlap and not needed, especially since Phoenix goes after Maul. So I just, for me, the the big the big winner if you're just looking on a paper and not analyzing any turn order is it two turns of offense down but it doesn't matter it's like okay like maybe if you use her by herself away from the black order team but what's the point of that this is meant to be an apex arena team they should everything with this team should work perfectly together where it's like you you see them off like on paper it's like well it's not necessarily a great standalone character but when you bring it together everything just works in synergy and i just didn't see it here um, Black uh, at 14 for uh, Yeti is Ebony Maul's passive. His comment here is the T4 upgrade of this passive is nice, but not what I expect for a legendary character requiring a legendary unlock. And what he's referring there to there is you need Black Bolt, who's a legendary, to unlock Ebony Maul, who's a legendary. So you got a legendary locked by legendary. So he's, his comment is is this, he'd expect more given that scenario. The resistance increase is good for both Ebony Maul, but also the other members of Black Order and Thanos, but the real benefits of this ability are not unlocked with the T4 upgrade. However, as resistance is a stat that can make or break a matchup, this is still ranked uh, highly. Next up for um, the next three here, um, at 13, I've got Ebony Maul's passive, and I've got it in yellow. Um, adds 10% resistance, Call only gets regens for the first time uh, Black Order uh, drops below 50% from Thanos' health passive, or if Call has bleeds and Thanos flips uh, spe in Thanos specials to flip those, or turn to Call alt someone with a regen and steals it. The reason I'm bringing up that regen is because if Call Obsidian has a regen when he's taunting, his resistance goes up. Fox next, a little trick for you. On, Thanos, on, on both Thanos' special and Call Obsidian's special, add a regen to Call Obsidian. Just put it on there. He should have an insane high resistance. He should not have that taunt cleared easily. Drop the regen on him so he doesn't have to go get it from somewhere or there's some micro situation to be able to put it on there. So anyway, um, like I mentioned, uh, there's the note here where it detects and game reads plus 30% resistance gain. Is that the case or is it 10% for the coding and msf.gg? We don't know. So if it's, it, my comment is here, if it's per, uh, if it's actually the 30% increase in game, then I'm saying this is at least an orange ability, which would shoot it way up. 
Um, at 13, uh, Yeti's got Proximal Midnight Special, uh, which was just one turn different than mine. Uh, surprisingly, I ranked I being Yeti this ability as low as I did, only because there are so many good abilities on this team. The 50% damage increase is going to stack up nicely, but applying offense down for two turns across three targets is really good. We've seen how abilities like this have shown their value in the past, with Spider-Man Symbiote Basic T4 as, as an example. Wolverthor is a great point that Ebony Mall Special and Proximal Midnight have overlapping functionality, but being able to ensure the target had that resist, uh, the target had that had resist a previous application get stuck with this is awesome. So that's what he's talking about. If someone resists, this is an additional opportunity to do it. So I, clearly we both struggle with that a little bit. Um, I, I don't know. I'd like to see Fox next Magneto this team a little bit in that part is specifically. Uh, Corvus Glaive Basic is what I got at number 12. The 20% piercing is not the focus here, but the guaranteed assist from Proxima is what will determine if you want this. Corvus, in theory, uses his basic on turns three through five. Is it is a guarantee, guaranteed assist need at that point? I don't think so. Um, you know, for me, I struggle with that. And also note that don't forget that the, the Proxima Midnight Assist will add an additional buff, clear. So you're guaranteed to pull another buff if she comes across. So, um, now, uh, full disclosure, did I actually upgrade this ability? I did. I did upgrade this ability, um, but I'm still not fully convinced that uh, you need it on a turn three to five for Corvus. So we'll see. It's still a good ability, like I've mentioned. Uh, Yeti thinks T4s could go all over the place with this team. You just flood the T4s on them if you really want to. Are they going to be Apex Arena still? Mm, maybe not, but they're going to be great offensively. Uh, Proxima Midnight Ultimate. Uh, this is what Yeti gets, has at 12. I can't think of another ability that reduces speed bar by 50%. So this is severely hindered the tar This will severely hinder the target. And the additional damage is welcome. I love how this ability takes the target out of fight for at least two turns. And I've got it one turn, one more up. And um, my, my, my comment here is the question here is if the additional 25% speed bar reduction is needed with the already 25% reduction and slow. The 40% piercing is solid. Mike, I put a question, should I move this up? This this has a potential ability for taking somebody out of the fight if you do the 50% reduction. So the question is, is do you need do you need that uh, additional 25% to win the fight or are you fine with the 25? That's where I struggle a little bit. At 11, Yeti's got um, Thanos, Empowered Thanos Basic. The damage increase of 60% is definitely a, a nice bonus for the ability, but always gains a counter and is the big deal here, especially as Thanos has longish cooldowns on his other abilities. Um, and that's, I'll get to mine in a second, but I, I generally agree. You, mine's even higher than this, so I, I was pretty, uh, I was a fan of this one. Coming in at number 10, I've got Corvus Glaive Special, as did Yeti. We have it in a different color here, but uh, still, we both have it at 10. My comment added 40% piercing to primary. Most injured target could really only see upgrading this if he is just coming short on killing the target. This is a turn two ability. Yeti's comments here. Have seen how hard this can hit for. From early gameplay videos, this ability has to be ranked highly, but still loses ground for others that have a larger impact on your gameplay. The 40% piercing increase is, is not something that gets me excited until you realize that this brings the ability to 400% piercing. Much like Black Bolt Special or Captain Ar Marvel Ultimate, keep an eye on this ability hitting your enemies hard so this was the ability that really started getting me to look at the piercing damage a little bit more so uh like i mentioned before we're gonna start looking at that in the rankings a little bit uh harder um all right so coming at number nine we both have empowered thanos ultimate the cool moon drop moon throw if you drop another moon on me the 50, my comments here, the 50% drain does not seem to matter, um, given that calls should have been taunting the entire time. Um, part of this increase is actually a 50% drain. For some reason, the Ultron bot actually didn't say that, um, but MSF.GG does, is that the drain from this is increased from 50% to 100%. Uh, so I'd have to double check the text in game, but I believe that's an added part of this. But regardless, in my mind, it doesn't change it because Thanos shouldn't have been being hit all that much unless, of course, Cole removes a taunt or gets his taunt removed um so unless a massive aoe team comes that can really hurt this team and specifically thanos then he won't need his drain heal the additional 50 percent piercing to all and guaranteed two attacks is nice however um 
Yeti's comment. I am so excited to see the animation for this ultimate. This was obviously prior to uh, us being able to see it in game. Uh, the improved piercing damage percentage of 50% is great, but so is the additional drain applied of 50%. Ensuring that the additional moon pulls um, to happen three times is really going to be the epitome of a fun factor for this team. We both love that ability. The animation's great. Again, Fox Next uh, animators, graphic designers, all you guys, kudos. All right, so coming in at number eight, for me, this is one of our bigger differences. He's got it at 11, I've got it at eight, a, a color upgrade difference, is Thanos' basic. It comes in ranked at the 64th best upgrade for damage, um, and it hits the adjacent. That was a big reason that I liked it, on top of the fact he's using it turn one and three as an AI. Sometimes, if you're controlling them, you might even use his turn one and two. Um, my comment is guaranteed counter is fine. The damage increase and the turn one and three uses where this makes us a good upgrade. Uh, Corvus Glaive basic is what Yeti has at eight, which was a, a number higher than mine. I had it at 12, he had it at eight. So that is a big difference there as well. Um, his comment is, I'm a big fan of the assist mechanic and this ability highlights the effectiveness of one damage dealer always summoning another when paired with how often Corvus Glaive uses his basic. The 20% piercing bonus feels on the low side, but this will do some serious damage to your enemies. With the guaranteed assist from Proxima Midnight, the pair will clear three positive effects. And that is not uh, a small task. That is a nice clear. Both of us at number seven, Empowered Thanos is special. My comment is two taunts on Cole is a must, but Cole already has that. So that is a total waste for an added taunt. Um, I actually talked to Fox Next a little bit about that one. They know, like, yeah, it's over. I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, the question is, how often will the flips all positive buffs up from three on an enemy team come into play? Seems to matter in a mirror match, which in arena matters, and this likely, this and is likely why someone invested in this team. So even though this team is borderline not really the Apex Arena team that they were made out to be, they're good on offense, but on defense, it's kind of like, okay. So, um... You know, it's still a great ability, the, the flip all. When you get an all, that is really nice, especially when there's so many positive effects. Yeti's comment here is, this ability is similar to the power, um, the power equity that Scientist Supreme affords other teams by forcing the other team positive effects to become negative effects. Allow Black Order to punish their opponents. While this ability also affords Call Obsidian Taunt for two turns, it gives the protection to the initial protection uh, that, team, the the, that the team needs to function. All right, so the top six, all essential, all red, all do them. And Yeti and I are seeing eye to eye on every single one of them. We're all like, this is what we think it is. So number six, Prox Proximal Midnight Basic, ranked 121st damage increase in the game. 40, my comment, 40% damage increase isn't bad, but the winner here is a guaranteed assist from Glaive that will do additional damage and clear more buffs and should happen from turns three to five at least. Note, don't forget that the Corpus Glaive Assist will also add an additional buff clear. Um, Yeti's comment, as, uh, as he's previously said, he's a big fan of the Assist mechanic, and Proxima Midnight will be using her basic frequently. The additional of 40% damage will add up nicely. With a guaranteed assist from Corpus Glaive, the pair will clear three positive effects. Good ability, guaranteed assist, clearing his buffs, it's a winner. Coming in at number five, Call Obsidian Passive. This damage increase ranks as the 47th damage increase in the game. And this is on a, on a passive. I just want you to know that, passive. Gain 10% HP is nice, but the 40% counter damage, um, plus the dam counter damage increase, which is 50%, if someone hits Thanos or Maul, is a really nice upgrade. I mean, again, if they're getting hit, he's pinging them. Ping, ping. Um, Yeti's coming here, another good passer for this team. Wow, and he's right, like this is a wow. Like this, there are another good passive. 10% health for a total of 30% is going to be noticeable for the Black Order and Thanos team members. But also 50% damage on his retaliation text is going to be scary good. For perspective, many of you know that I'm Yeti, uh, a fiend for out of turn combat damage. And that's totally true. That's a big reason why he loves Thor so much. Uh, Colossus Passive, for example, for uh, hits for 100% plus 10% per charge, and Call Obsidian Passive Retaliation when Thanos or Ebony Maul gets hit will be hitting for 250%. This is a good one. Uh, coming at number four, Corvus Glaive Passive. We both have it uh, the same again. 
10% damage increase is very nice, but I'm not fully convinced you need it outside of mirror matches. Well, given that we've seen that these guys aren't necessarily the arena apex, maybe you do. Um, Corvus Glaive passive, Yeti's comment here. Oh my, 10% damage across the entire Black Order team and Thanos? When you factor this damage increase with the piercing damage of Corvus Glaive, I really expected this ability to be ranked higher. Alas, there are even more substantial ones. I do really like the 20% crit chance improvement. So expect a lot of big hits from this sneaky bugger. Number three and number two. Coming in number three, Cole Obsidian's Ultimate. This comes in ranked as the third best damage increase in the game for a T4. Bang for your buck. This thing is a whopper. It is monstrous. It is a good upgrade. Massive damage increase, which currently only factors one death proof, given he will be taunted and can add another at 75% in 50% HP threshold. This could be an insta kill. Um, at uh, Yeti's comment here for his uh, ultimate, wow, for a protector, Call Obsidian is going to put the hurt on your enemies, and frequently too. With skillful gameplay and stacking debuffs, this will result in scary good numbers. Can't wait to see all the brag posts about giant Obsid giant Call Obsidian ultimate hits. This thing is going to hit like a monster. All right, coming in at number two, Ebony Maw Special. My comment here is an additional turn of defense up is very nice. Thanos has already used two turns, so his defense up from passive call are gone and only call his defense up for two turns at this point. Uh, Yeti's comment, this ability reads very plainly, defense up for two turns, but it applies this to all members of Black Order and Thanos. I do expect a lot of chatter about this particular recommendation, but this level of team-wide protection is more than difficult to handle, especially when you consider Ebony Maul passive T4 making these defensive up even harder to remove. So you re yeah, the defense up is uh, added resist, pretty solid so coming in at number one number one ebony maul's ultimate his ultimate t4 my comments must get that speed bar fill drain in into the ability pretty simple you want that speed bar drain right that's it uh yeti's comment this is the other big ability that people will look forward to using on the black order team in fights the speed bar fill for 25 percent assuming a full black order team uh, and full Black Order and Thanos team and reducing enemies by 25% will be backbreaking. As the synergy for this team is very strong, this T4 ability will be the staple that makes them bring the pain. So that's it. That's our rankings. So Ebony Maul tops the list with his ultimate special, Call Obsidian, Corvus Glaive Passive, and Call Obsidian's Passive and Proximal Midnight's Basic were the top six essential items, which you can see in the graphic. And again, come check out our discords. All of those links will be in the description below. Uh, let us know what you think. You know, like I said, this, I mean, this video is probably the longest uh, T4 ability video that I did. Um, you know, uh, there were so many comments with these guys. There was so much discussion that we had. Just felt like I really needed to put a little bit more into it. Uh, so again, hopefully you guys can find the different components of the video that you want. For those of you who just want the infographic, you can go just get that. For those of you who just wanted to see the T4 upgrades, did that. If you wanted to see the in-depth analysis and the comments that we each had for it and how we each did it individually, just did that. So hopefully this is your full analysis of the Black Order T4s and how we got to the rankings. You know, come, like I said, come join our discords, chat with us, let us know what you think. Appreciate you guys stopping by, hammer down on the like button, click the notification bell, subscribe, all the goodness, share with your alliance mates. Again, tell them to come chat with us too. We love talking to you guys. We love theory crafting, all that kind of stuff. We'll almost always get to you guys as soon as we can. We, If we miss something, it's not intentional. Just tag us, let us know, um, and we'll definitely address it. So appreciate you guys stopping by. And until next time, hope you have a wonderful day.